Hey, what's up everybody? Daniel here from Never Enough Tech. I'm continuing my iPad OS 14 series where I dig just a little deeper on any one feature than the next YouTube person. This is my third installment. My other two videos are in the description and cover widgets and scribble. In this video, I will dig into Apple's new compact design language, which you'll encounter when receiving voice and FaceTime calls, and also when palling around with Siri. At the end, I'll cover some lesser known expansions to shortcuts and how to use them. It'll be fun. I'm all about helping you unlock the power of the iPad dark mode side. Well, that didn't really work. Compact calls. Finally, in iOS 14, when receiving a phone or FaceTime call, you don't get this anymore. I always kind of felt like there was a national emergency whenever I received a call, taking up a lot of space there. Pretty dramatic. See, Apple had this revelation that just maybe users don't want their device to be completely hijacked, like ever. Seems like it shouldn't have taken 14 major software versions to get here. So, Compact Siri. Apple Photoshop Siri's background out, confiscated her waves, and placed her in the lower right-hand corner. Just a free-floating orb now. On the prowl. <laughs> On top of this, the visual construction of Siri's responses went on a serious diet. Siri's responses are now presented in what Apple is referring to as a compact design. On the iPad, the dialog boxes and answers appear above the orb, as opposed to the top of the screen, like an iOS 14, or the whole screen, as we've seen since Siri's conception in 2011 in iOS 5. Siri's responses will be getting a lot more interactive and more visual as developers are getting more tools to show rich visual interactive content, like a list of recipes to choose from with pictures next to them. Just like with calls, Apple's goal here is to get you precisely what you want and stay out of your way. Siri is still prone to spitting up crappy answers to trivia, but at least the answers are less intrusive. Here is where I rant about Siri being stuffed with 20 times more facts than not one, not two, but three years ago. No one wants to know how much more Siri knows since 2017. How has her knowledge improved over the last year? I'll assume not much. Kind of shady, Apple. I know you're being too polite to ask, but my relationship with Siri is still very Sam and Diane after almost nine years. Would you like to go out with me? No, thanks. Moving on, shortcuts. Okay, so I'm kind of of the impression that there is some general confusion about what shortcuts are and why they are useful. What is a shortcut? Well, one might describe them as an action or string of actions bundled up and ready to be unleashed. So there are lots of packages pre-bundled for you by apps you have downloaded. For instance, Tile has a shortcut to activate each of my trackers, like my keys. Apple has a lot of ready-made shortcuts in gallery. There's one I particularly like that can hear a track, find which album the track came from, and then play that entire album. Quite frankly, shortcuts give you some tools you might not otherwise have without help from a third-party app, like creating a grid of photos. All this being said, shortcuts really start to show their value when you can customize them to meet your specific needs. So a little story, when I go to bed, I want my screen to dim, do not disturb to be activated, and the Adobe Lightroom app to launch. I like to relax by editing photos before bed. So how can I make all this happen? Not too hard. Let's kick this off by creating a new shortcut and naming it Nightpad. That's a really solid name. Not hearing any issues there. We have three actions to add. Number one, dim the screen. So let's just type screen brightness in the search bar and you will see set brightness as a ready-made action. Go ahead and select and it will show up in your action timeline. I'll be setting screen brightness to 15%. Number two, set do not disturb. So I will type do not disturb, look for set do not disturb, select it and it will pop in as our second action. The third action is open Lightroom, so type open app, pop it in as the third action, then make sure to specify Lightroom. Awesome, new minty fresh nightpad ready to go. We can test it out with the play button right here. All right, the screen dimmed, do not disturb on, Lightroom launched, it works. Okay, so we have our Nightpad shortcut. How can we activate it? Well, you can manually call on it by going into shortcuts and selecting it. The absolute worst way to do it, by the way. You can select it via a widget. Better, you can tell Siri to open it. Also better if she understands you. But maybe the best way to activate a shortcut is to create an automation. That is to have a shortcut fire automatically as you go about your normal daily life. Apple added some nice daily life triggers in iOS 14. 
Let's take a look. Here are the old options, here to stay, and here are the ones introduced in iOS 14. And this is the one I wanna focus on, charger, when my iPad connects to power. Yeah, so remember, Nightpad is about winding down. I usually only charge my iPad at night, so charging seems like a really good trigger for my Nightpad shortcut. To set up this automation, let's press the plus button, create personal automation, scroll to the bottom and select charger. Make sure the connected option is selected, Next, I'm gonna throw my Nightpad shortcut in as the action. So I will type run shortcut, select it, then make sure to tell it to run Nightpad. Press next and then decide whether you wanna be asked before it runs. I don't want that to happen. I will turn that option off, press done, and now it's set up. Let's test it out by plugging in. Seems to work. Now at this point, some of you may be screaming at me saying, well, it's a great feature, but no way in hell I want that to run every time I plug in. I'm a day plugger. Gotta find some new words. Maybe it should only run for you if it's 10 p.m. or later. You can definitely configure it to run only in certain time blocks, but that would put us more in an intermediate tutorial, which I fear is out of scope for this video. I would love to make that video if there's interest. Likes and comments are very motivating. Help me help you. Stop, okay. In closing, I would like to point out the Apple Watch can now run shortcuts, which may be the biggest advancement. Though in my limited time messing with it, I've noticed a lot of can't run in this environment error messages. The whole thing probably deserves its own video. All this being said, the most obvious trigger is workouts and using that to trigger your jams with a Z. You ever just wanna dance and have that be your workout? What? There's a workout for that? Anyway, gonna wrap this up. Catch you on the next one. Thank you.